We are here with um, Satyricons Frost. Thank you so much for the honor of making some time for us. By all means, happy to be here. How are you doing today? Doing fine, thank you. Um, I'm here for this. And uh, seems like, um, like a fine day. And it's going to be good to do a show here in Belgium again. What I also thought was very interesting is how you approach performing and how you approach getting into that spiritual ready state before you actually get there. Yeah. Um, can, can you describe a little bit the rituals that you that you take? The way I function, it is very, very important to, to be present mentally and physically. Um, and what helps me get there is doing some yoga, uh, some balancing exercises and other kinds of exercise. Um, putting on the makeup is actually a ritual that you know, makes it easier for the brain to understand that now I'm narrowing focus and putting it here on this task. Uh, and it helps me really become, you know, the artist me, where I refine what I need yeah. to be a drummer on stage and, you know, channeling all my resources uh, on that. Um, in that task and, uh, and also I sit behind a warm-up kit and kind of just get into it that way mm -hmm. and when I do that I usually get in touch with that fifth gear that I want to, to be in when I enter stage so all of this is something that I find to be very helpful there's a negative side to that as well because it requires quite a bit of time and resources and sometimes it would be fine to you know just be very calm and relaxed about it enter stage do a marvelous job and, and then yeah. be back in the relaxed state again but that's not how i work uh, and, and i have to I, I just have to pay attention to what i know to be working and what i know not to be working and after many years in the game i'm I'm pretty aware of that. Yeah, but I can so. completely understand that you have so much input coming at you while you are moving around, traveling around, you know, all the sort of organizational and practical things that come with that. Yeah, I need to get away from the mundane and I need to enter what is is more spiritual and musical. And I'm a more slightly flaky and disturbed person. Right. So work needs to be done, you know, both and in the mental world and, and in the physical. Yeah. I like your, I, I, I'm very interested by that approach and you mentioned the word spiritual very often. And is there any way you could possibly describe the experience of a performance in that way? Oh, there's a lot of red energy in me when I enter stage. This is also a little for good and for bad because it, it makes me very driven. Uh, and as Satyricon's music has opened up a lot, like we discussed earlier, then there is also the need to actually enter more relaxed states. Uh, so I try to kind of counter the effects of all of that red energy by being, uh, being very present in the here and now through the through the mindful exercises that comes with the yoga routines and all of that yeah. because at least it makes you focused even if you're very driven yeah. and, uh, and the fact that I know that I need to you know alter between stage, uh, states I mean uh, yeah. makes it also possible to kind of prepare a little for that yeah. uh, so, so I can, can somehow control that red energy while you are in that moment is that an attempt at, is that what you yes doing? yes to at least to a certain extent. Yeah, I will can. be on fire all the time, but uh, unlike before, I can still be quite relaxed actually for greater parts of the show. Do you guys still have a covers album coming up? We do. We got started on that cover project 
before uh, starting work on Deep Calls Upon Deep. Mm -hmm. And part of the plan was to just enter the rehearsal space doing something completely different than what we had been doing during, you know, some four years mm -hmm. uh, of um, the self-titled album cycle, like, you know, first the time of writing and rehearsing the album, recording it and then touring with the album. Yeah. Uh, and in Satyricon we always want every album to represent something new. Uh, it should show uh, a major development and hopefully also an improvement in the band. Uh, uh, and we like there to be some distance between the one album process and the other. Yeah. Uh, and since we had toured quite a lot, we kind of had the album in Down. our veins. So yeah. we thought cover project could be a good way of you know getting started on something else. And let's see if that motivates us to to start writing our own material eventually. Uh, but that happened sooner rather than later. So. Before we were done with the cover album project, we had lots of new material written for our own studio album. And mm -hmm. since that is more important anyway, Obviously. they thought that this yeah. cover project can wait, we can get back to that. Yeah. Let's do the album first. And, and that's kind of where we are now. We are now touring with Deep Calls Upon Deep still. Perhaps we'll be returned to the cover album project when this cycle is over. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, when it feels due, we will, we will do that. As an active musician, you have those cycles of writing, recording, and then touring. Which part of that do you enjoy the most? You know, the most interesting and, and the one that is most happening and that um, brings the most development is the creative phase, which is where we actually write and arrange and rehearse the album, mm -hmm. no, no doubt. But then there's also a very important and beneficial stage after that where we get to work with rendering the songs live because that's, that's quite different. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you write and arrange the songs, what is important is the solutions that you come up with. Yeah. Uh, and when you record, it's important that you manage to record them with you know your heart and soul and with the right kind of, of energy put into it and when with the right kind of presence. Mm -hmm. But you can do it fifty times in order to get the you know just that that uh, right vibe to it if you need to. Mm -hmm. But when you render the songs live, like you know, on the very day that the album was released, we, we we performed the entire album live. Yeah. So we had to know every song by heart and not being, you know, given any second chances. We just had to know the songs perfectly and switch between the moods and, uh, and the energies and atmospheres, which is a different kind of challenge, but yeah. that will actually help you the next time you are working with arranging and recording again. So it's, I feel that what happens before and after recording uh, are both very, very important processes yeah. in order to continually grow as a musician. Because what makes you a better composer and better guitar player or drummer uh, and a more enlightened musician, so I, I would say, um, when you record an album following a previous one is the phase that has happened in between. Yeah. And for Deep Calls Upon Deep, what was, the, what was that step that you could draw from in that writing? Like you said, you started writing faster actually than you were intending to. I think what was very important uh, in the process that led up to the previous album, our mm -hmm. self-titled one, was that uh, we managed to bring much more dynamics into our songs and our sound picture. Hence the self-titling of that album. But actually, after that, uh, we could like apply it a lot more. It was like we had opened the door now, and then we could like roam through the rooms and discover uh, what dynamics could could mean for a band if we were applying it a bit more freely and naturally. 
So we're really scratching the surface on the self title album due to what had yeah, yeah. happened and what process we had been through. We could now really apply it as a, as a natural tool and a toolbox in a way. And that brought the music like a lot further. And we realized that, you know, we really were scratching the surface on the previous albums that we can go deep now. And do you and Satir immediately feel that mutually as well? Like um, something's happening I, here? I noticed that we pretty often think the same things even if we do not discuss them. So I'm not sure if he would have agreed. We haven't planned that, you know, this is actually what has been taking place, this is what we're going to tell about it. It's very possible that he could say something pretty similar without ever knowing that I have mentioned something like that. I also know that you are an appreciator of quality, uh, tastes and foods and, Certainly. and so on. Can you give me some more examples of what you can really enjoy or almost need as an appreciator of quality? I think that that goes for everything. That if you have started to appreciate uh, quality in arts, like music or otherwise. It is not that far-fetched that you will look for the same things in other areas of life. So I look for that in, in foods that I eat. I mean, I'm, I don't crave high-quality foods that, you know, just blows me away all the time. But whenever there's a special occasion, I find that to be important. But I still don't eat shit. Yeah, that's good. So. Yeah. Mainly vegan these days, actually. Yeah. I, I've come to realize that 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 is going to be the future. So my prediction in ten years from now, the world will look completely different on the subject of food. And this is a recent. Change? And even quality of food, actually. Uh huh. And this is a recent change. Yes. That you are going more vegan. Yeah. No, I I, I just realized at some point that. Um, that uh, it's not about politics, it's about understanding how we work. If I spend a lot of time trying to make my body work better whenever I rehearse or record or play live, why the hell shouldn't I focus on what helps me in the food department? Because that matters a lot, it has an impact. And then quality actually gets another meaning because high quality then means that it has high nutritional value, for instance, that you don't eat something that um, brings you away from your goal, but something that helps you achieve it. Yes. I think it does matter truly. Yes. And as I said, uh, when I realized I, I just couldn't pretend that this doesn't carry meaning, and I've also become very convinced that, uh, that what I and many others have concluded with is going to be the conclusion of a majority of people in the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty certain.